imagined that the only state of consciousness that existed was, in fact, our dream world. Further imagine that in such a state an unusual person, we will call him Ramana, confronts you by claiming to have access to a hitherto unknown level of awareness which he calls the waking world. Ramana further argues that all experiences within the dream state are subsumed, indeed produced, by a waking brain which is inaccessible to dreamers. And therefore the attempt by the majority of dream materialists to reduce waking phenomena down to their dream stuff is completely wrong and misleading, since the truth of the situation is completely the opposite. The dream is happening because of the waking state brain in another realm, not the apparent dream brain which looks to be generating awareness from itself and from its extended environment. Ramana's ultimate point is a very simple one. While it may seem too overwhelmingly clear that the dream brain causes the dream world, the fact is that a transcendent state of being is its real cause and origination. What to make of such a claim? If one were grounded in dream stuff methodologies, one might ask for some convincing evidence of such a world, let's call this thing a churchland. To which Romano might reply that it was impossible to actually transport such waking stuff into the dream world, since the very moment one attempts to do so it instantly transforms into dream material. Churchland, ever the skeptic might then rejoin that Ramana's bold claims lack proof and as such warrant no further attention. Or, she might argue that Ramana's waking excursions were just modifications of his own dream brain and that what he thought was higher, and transcendent was neither, since his numinous experiences were the result of neural dream discharges within his own dream skull. At this juncture, Ramana may argue that to see the proof of his claim one must be willing to do a most radical experiment. One must literally die to the dream state in order to properly access the waking state. When that happens, then Churchland will actually have the extraordinary evidence she demands. Of course, Churchland might balk at this suggestion since dream death seems a bit extreme to prove a point. Churchland may persist in query Romana again and say, why can't you produce something in our present state of awareness which would give us confidence that your claims are true? In addition, is it not possible that you are wrong, Romana, since your recollection of the waking state must be recalled in and through your present dream brain? How do you possibly know that, that the dream brain couldn't produce what you wrongly believe is higher? Romano may then point out that the certainty of any experiment rests upon an uninspected axiom, that the present form of awareness is somehow the best and final arbitrator of all other states of consciousness. Why this is so isn't an ontological fact and if other superluminal forms of awareness do exist then exploring them may help us contextualize our present dream state. At this stage then Romana could encourage Churchland to take up the experiment by practicing a method that he himself used. Using one's own self-awareness ask what is the source of such luminosity. According to Romana, that very inquiry will lead to a deep questioning of what one takes to be real and permanent and will eventually prompt one to emerge into the waking state, which itself is the larger context behind the dream world. In such an awakening, the erstwhile skeptic will immediately discover that dream stuff was not the real cause behind dreaming. Rather, it was a physical brain in a completely different state of awareness.